Hello, my name is Mike Rayner and this video is on how to install the Eclipse Kepler IDE for Java EE into an Ubuntu 13.04 64-bit desktop. The outcomes for this video is check your computer to see if it's got a 64-bit version of Java installed, download the 64-bit Eclipse Kepler IDE for Java EE. Before installing Kepler, I want to take a little short side trip and uh, show you that uh, different versions of Eclipse Kepler come with different set of Linux permission. That may affect how uh, you do the install. This version is going to be the Java EE version. And then finally I'm going to install it and then create a desktop icon and shortcut for Eclipse. Requirements a 64-bit Debian computer. Ubuntu 13.04 with 1 gigabyte of RAM is used in this demo. 64-bit Java installed and, in, and an internet connection. Got additional info from Eclipse or the Ubuntu forums. And a disclaimer, while I have researched this material, I can't ver fully verify that it will work with all combinations of hardware and software. So I have been asked to include a disclaimer if you you wish you can stop the video and read disclaimer. Always back up your work before you're actually installing some new software. Before installing Eclipse Kepler you should check the bit version of your Java install. You should install 32-bit Kepler for a 32-bit Java and 64-bit Kepler for 64-bit Java. So to do that we'll simply open up here and if terminal's not showing, just type in TR and it'll pop up. Open up a terminal and move it up here. Simply put in Java dash version. In this case, it says 64 bit Java hotspot, 64 bit server. So I've got a 64 bit Java here. So we can go ahead and close this for now. So let's go to Firefox web browser and we're going to go to www.eclipse.org. We're going to go download Eclipse. And Eclipse I like to download is the uh, Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Now I only have Java SE on this computer, but the reason I like to download this is because it comes along with some extra stuff like for web applications it makes it easier to write uh, software that if you're going to post things to the web. So since we found we have 64-bit Java, click right here. And if you want to check, you've got your uh, checksums. Download it. And we're going to save the file. Click OK. Of course, it's asking for donations. So if you've got some extra money, go ahead and donate because it's a lot of work to get these programs up and running and keep maintaining them. Now we'll come back when this is fully downloaded. Finally, all downloads have finished. So we'll go back to the previous page. And here we have checksums, MD5 and SHA-1. Let's try the MD5 checksum. MD5, here it is. To verify this checksum, open up a terminal. And we're going to go to CD to the downloads directory. It's capital downloads directory. Do an LS and there it is. And we're going to do MD5 sum and we're going to copy space paste do a pipe do a grep and now let's pull up this number here do a copy here copy Go back to the terminal no space paste and hit enter and it's going to trundle a bit and 
says it's okay. If you don't believe me, well, let's just run that again. I'll show you what happens when it's not okay. Whoops, not. Sorry about that. And we'll just change the check sum by one digit. And if it's not okay, nothing will show up. But since it's okay, it comes up in red and the file name comes up also. So the MD5 checksum is verified. Next step is to install Eclipse JE Kepler. Because I'm on the educational channel and not just the technological channel, there's one thing I need to point out here as far as downloading and installing Eclipse. Now I've downloaded two copies of Eclipse. One is the JEE or the EE Kepler and the Eclipse Standard Edition. And I've extracted both copies. Now the Eclipse EE comes down and when I do permissions on that, check the permissions and owners uh, on that, I notice that this has got message bus as the owner and users as a group. And when I just take this Eclipse standard, that's the first one, is the just without the EE, that's Eclipse standard. And I see that it's got Mike, Mike, or I'm the owner. So if I want other people to use that Eclipse standard on my computer, I'm going to have to do something to change the owner or probably create a group and then have everyone be in the group that wants to use Eclipse. Now as far as the other one is concerned, if you notice here we have this S-bit set right here, and that basically means that anyone in the users group can go ahead and use Eclipse. So just wanted to point this out that I don't know what all the different versions of Eclipse, how all the permissions come down in all the different versions of Eclipse, but this is something that you might want to check. And if you have a problem installing a certain version of Eclipse that you want to put on your computer, you might want to look at this and then you know change change permissions as needed. Okay, now I'll go back to the actual install and uh, extraction of Eclipse from this little uh, aside. Okay, downloaded Eclipse, taken a look at permissions and saw that it could create some problems uh, depending on how you install Eclipse. Go ahead with install of Java Eclipse EE. So let's open up a uh, terminal and we're going to go to CD, downloads directory, got to spell it right. And there's the file that we downloaded, the uh, Eclipse JEE. And so let's extract it. Well, first, before we extract it, let's let's make a directory where we're going to put it. So I like to put it in the op directory. sudo make directory. And we'll use pv. v is for both. p is for parent. And opt64. And so it made directory op64. Now I'm going to do a extract a file to that directory tar xzvf. I know that you can type in e and hit a star and it'll take the whole file, but somebody watching this video may have a couple of things with e starting with e and then it might get confusing for him. So I'm just going to copy and paste. One other thing I want to point out, if you've got this white part right here showing, it's going to extract it to this directory. That's an automatic return right there when you do the copy and paste. Anyway, so now we've got that. I'll put a capital C for change where we're going to put it. Opt 64. So it's going to extract it to the Opt 64 directory and I chose 64 because as this is a 64-bit computer, I tend to divide programs into 64-bit and 32-bit. Hit enter. And let's go to op64 and see what's there. And I'm doing ls. And you'll see there's Eclipse with users that have that S permission so they can execute on it. So I'm going to create a symlink to the USR bin directory. Use sudo ln-s. This is like a desktop shortcut in Windows. Op 
opt 64 eclipse 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 the second eclipse is a file the first is a directory usr bin eclipse now I should have put a verbose so well we'll check it and let's go and check and make sure that it's there and I'll go to CD USR bin and for some reason here in 13.04 I, I, I can't always get out the whole thing showing up easy so I'm just going to drag this increase the size of my window here I'm going to do an LS and what I want to find is the clips up here and it's got to be blue if it's not blue here it is if it's red or something you just simply find your keyboarding error or uh, whatever mistake you made and then add an F after the S and that will force it to change okay so next thing I'm going to do is go to the uh, USR share applications directory and create a desktop file. Now I, I can I don't have to be in the directory create the file but just to kind of show and the text editor I'm going to use is Vim. Pseudo Vim and if you don't have Vim on your uh, computer you can just sudo app get install Vim. You can use get it I'm just going to use Vim here and then the name of the file is going to be Eclipse Dos Desktop. I'm going to start typing and basically bracket or insert bracket. You'll see what it, how it is when, when I'm through. Desktop entry. name equal eclipse name English equal eclipse type equal application exec equal eclipse in this case it's lowercase because that's uh, what the executive file or the file that you run is simply called Eclipse. Now these are all the ones you need and I'm going to put in some extra ones. I, I think it's all the ones, don't quote me on that, but I think those uh, the name type and executors is basically all you need, but not a hundred percent sure on that. But And so I'm going to have an icon, opt 64 Eclipse icon dot XP M and that's if you check in directory of Eclipse you'll see it there. Now there's also an EE icon if you want to uh, play around and, and pull that out. I'm not sure Java EE icon. I'm not sure where that that one exactly is, but it's it's there somewhere. And that's pretty much it. We'll hit Escape here, colon, right quit. So now all I have to do now I'm it's installed pretty much. I just simply type in Eclipse, and I'm going to have to wait a while here there it comes and it's going to load fairly slowly for the first time if you want to you can also do a dash clean Eclipse dash clean if you've had previous versions of Eclipse on your uh, computer select the workspace I'm just going to just take the default here if you wish like this is a Ubuntu 13.04 uh, computer with one gigabyte of memory, you should probably give it a little more memory to run Eclipse because it seems like I think 1304 takes a lot of memory and then I'll, Eclipse takes a lot of memory and between the two of them they're not uh, as quick as they should be. 
and we can check for updates here and it's going to run through the updates and I think the last time I checked for this version there is uh, there are no updates so I'm simply going to click the cancel I'm going to hit the close button right here exit Eclipse I'm going to exit my uh, terminal once it's shut down gracefully go up here to my finder and type in Eclipse there's my icon and I'm going to add it down here wherever you can put it wherever you want close this and let's run Eclipse just to verify that it's working so it's working and that's pretty much all there is to install EE the only thing uh, I mean Eclipse EE Kepler EE only thing I'd like to point out is that you may want to change some of the permissions if you're running different versions and want to make sure everyone on your computer can get to whatever version of Eclipse that you're uh, downloading and installing. Thank you.